10 WWE wrestlers who survived a horrible gimmick. Number 10, Batista. Upon arriving on the main roster, Batista was given the rather bizarre and one-dimensional gimmick of Decon Batista. This gimmick would see Batista become the heel enforcer for Reverend Devon, and it was hardly a surprise that this gimmick failed to get Batista over. Batista himself also loathed the gimmick, and he would label the character as horrible during an interview with Uproxx. Only in WWE, when I first came up, I did this character called Decon Batista, so it was the same last name, but I was working with this guy named Devon Dudley, and he was doing this televangelist preacher type deal where he was collecting money, and I held this big goofy box, and I was a security guard of his money box. So ridiculous. It was horrible. Thankfully, WWE realized rather quickly that Batista had potential, and this potential wasn't going to be realized with the Decon Batista persona. Just a few short months after his main roster debut, WWE would pivot with the creative direction for Batista, and this would pair him with Triple H and Ric Flair to form Evolution, and over time, Batista would become a household name of the Ruthless Aggression Era. Number 9. Bray Wyatt Initially, it looked like Bray Wyatt was going to be booked in the lower mid card in WWE. Wyatt, when he first started on the main roster, was playing a character known as Husky Harris, and it's hard to define what this gimmick was supposed to represent as the audience were never directly told. Naturally, due to the lack of development of this character, the fans had no connection towards it, and Wyatt knew he needed to come up with something different. This was when Wyatt came up with the Bray Wyatt persona, and to say that this saved his career would be an understatement. The Wyatt persona was unique, gritty, and somehow, despite the character being outlandish in nature, Wyatt managed to deliver the character with a sense of realism thanks to his masterful promo work. This character would become universally beloved by the WWE fans, both as a babyface and a heel, that was why it would have a genuine and organic connection with the crowd, why it would become a multi-time world champion and would have celebrated feuds with iconic names such as Daniel Bryan, The Undertaker, John Cena, and Randy Orton. Number 8. Dolph Ziggler Dolph Ziggler's WWE career didn't get off to the best of starts. Ziggler would have two distinct characters and both were comedic acts that had short shelf life. One of the characters Ziggler portrayed was Kerwin White's caddy, and following this, Ziggler would infamously portray Nikki, who was a member of the male cheerleading group known as the Spirit Squad. These gimmicks were going to be hard to overcome, yet it was apparent that Ziggler had the makings to become a top star in the company, and it was when Ziggler re-debuted on the main roster as Dolph Ziggler that his luck began to change. Ziggler got over thanks to his charisma and his incredible in-ring work. Ziggler started to have tremendous matches on TV, and the fans gradually gravitated towards him. Ziggler went from a superstar's mainstay to world champion in just a space of a few years, and it's a testament to Ziggler that he managed to survive such lackluster personas early on in his WWE tenure. Number 7. Chad Gable In 2019, WWE, specifically Vince McMahon, had a gimmick idea for Chad Gable that would apparently take him to the next level. Gable would become Shorty G, and this gimmick was focused on Gable's height and nothing else. To represent the gimmick change, Gable would debut hideous new ring attire which made him look ridiculous. Fans heavily criticized the gimmick and for good reason, but according to Gable during an appearance on After the Bell, he saw the gimmick change as an opportunity. I always ask for opportunities. I've been in Vince's office, I talk to the writers, I'm constantly asking for opportunities. When I finished King of the Ring, it was explained to me that this was the direction we were going. I'm not the type of guy that's going to go in and ask for an opportunity and when given it, complain about it. That's not my philosophy on life. I got my opportunity. Is it the perfect situation? No. In amateur wrestling, me being short was not a thing because I was on a team with 55 and 60 kilo guys who were not even 5 foot. I was on the taller end. It was fine. I got the opportunity I asked for, but it started going off the rails when I was doing segments with guys that I'm taller than. I'm going to try and give it every ounce of energy I have because I'm committed to this. The gimmick lasted around a year and luckily it failed to impact Gable's credibility as the fans loved him and they were fully aware of Vince McMahon's questionable motives with the character. Number 6. Kane now, Kane is considered by many to be one of the most pivotal characters in WWE history. Yet Kane had a tough and complex history with gimmicks before he became the devil's favorite demon. Kane would first portray the dreaded Isaac Yankum DDS, and this was basically an evil dentist, and it came at a time where virtually every wrestler had a profession, so that's likely why WWE believed that this gimmick would work. This gimmick was horrendously executed, and Kane's second gimmick would be even worse. In 1996, they booked Kane to portray the fake version of Diesel, and naturally, this completely fell flat. It was in 97 when Kane debuted as The Undertaker's half-brother, and the best thing about the Kane character was that his entire body would be covered, meaning fans wouldn't be able to initially work out that Kane was the one who portrayed the abysmal gimmicks that were Yankum and fake Diesel. Number 5. John Cena 
Arriving on TV in 2002, John Cena made the perfect first impression. Cena would slap Kurt Angle across the face and utter the words, ruthless aggression. Whilst this was indeed the perfect debut, Cena didn't have a fleshed out character, and he was in essence a generic rookie, and that wasn't going to cut it for a ruthless aggression era audience. After a strong presentation early on, Cena fell further and further down the card. His gimmick was so insanely bland, and WWE had evidently given up on him. They were even considering releasing Cena, but that was until Cena's rapping caught the attention of Stephanie McMahon, who was influential in keeping Cena around and debuting the iconic Doctor of Thugonomics character on TV. Speaking on the Ruthless Aggression documentary, the WWE legend discussed the exact moment everything began to change. I was told that I'd be getting my release in Christmas cuts because it just wasn't working. We travel as a community, so we're all on the same bus. So I heard a bunch of guys sitting at the back of the bus like Rikishi and Rey Mysterio kind of leading the charge and they were all freestyling. And I remember just being like, let's go try this. Just dove right in and it was like it resonated with me. In two seconds, I made up a small rap about tuna fish, the jetway, the plane we were about to go on and the destination, then closed it with a comment about Stephanie. She said, would you like to do this on television? I said, absolutely. Number four, The Rock. In late 96, the WWE audience were fed up with the stale characters and this led to a shift of the fans vocally revolting and turning against babyfaces. One of the babyfaces that fans notably turned on was Rocky Maivia, whose blue chipper character was being heckled with insanely negative chants each week. This gimmick could have resulted in the end of Rocky Maivia's chants at the big time, yet a welcome heel turn resulted in Maivia becoming The Rock, and this would be a booking decision that would change WWE history forever. The Rock was now able to deliver a character that he was truly comfortable with, and the character in promo work was some of the best that WWE had ever seen. The character change was so popular that WWE had no choice but to turn him into a heroic babyface, and between the years of 99 to 2003, it could certainly be argued that The Rock was the single biggest star on the entire show. Number 3. Stone Cold Steve Austin The ringmaster character on the surface isn't the worst gimmick imaginable, yet when it was given to a wrestler that had so much more to offer, it's inevitably gonna fail. The ringmaster gimmick was basically what the name suggests. The gimmick was based around Steve Austin's ring abilities and Austin knew that this gimmick wasn't the gimmick he needed to truly transcend and get over the audience. During an episode of the Steve Austin show, the Texas Rattlesnake discussed the ringmaster persona and this is what he had to say. From when I came in as the ringmaster and I knew it was a suck ass gimmick right, but I had a wife and two kids and a log cabin on 10 acres. I gotta pay my bills or they're gonna take all my shit from me, so I'll go up there. I'd already been up to visit Vince twice. I knew they didn't have anything planned for me and they were just bringing me in as a mechanic. In the same interview, Austin spoke openly about the fact he knew that the gimmick was never going to work. I knew that wasn't going to work after, a six, after six months and so. Whatever, I started to think about it. Drinking beer, whiskey, watching television, and I came up with the Stone Cold persona. The Stone Cold character would begin taking shape in 96 and magic was born. The character was partly responsible for the major surge of interest in pro wrestling in the second half of the 90s and Austin became a household name with every demographic across the world. There's certainly financial evidence to point towards Austin being the biggest draw that WWE have ever had under contract. And it's crazy to think that if Austin didn't come up with the Stone Cold character, then the WWE landscape could have been completely different. Number 2. LA Knight Upon reports circulating that WWE were calling LA Knight up from NXT, fans were ecstatic. LA was a perfect fit for the main roster, yet it was then reported that Vince McMahon wanted to turn LA into Max Dupree and present him as a manager. The Dupree character would be a manager of a male modeling agency and fans instantly loathed it. It was terribly executed and it was evident that LA was uncomfortable in the role. Fans endlessly pushed WWE to change their minds and it took a number of months but eventually WWE listened and LA Knight was back on TV. It was a miracle that LA was able to get over the level he did in 2023 as the managerial gimmick was destined to be a colossal failure and it was no doubt going to be LA that would have taken the majority of the blame. And number one, Cody Rhodes. A WWE making the bold call to repackage Cody Rhodes as Stardust will always remain a baffling move. Rhodes was consistently over as simply Cody Rhodes and Rhodes delivering a carbon copy of Goldust persona wasn't going to suddenly push Rhodes into the upper echelon of WWE. The gimmick quickly fizzled out and before fans knew it, Rhodes was regularly on WWE Superstars and Main Event. And this eventually led to Rhodes cutting ties with WWE and seeking his release. But they clearly didn't know what they had with Rhodes as he would become a household name in various other promotions and even became EVP of AEW. In one of the most shocking returns of the past decade, Rhodes triumphantly returned to WWE at WrestleMania 38 and this time the Stardust persona was buried and forgotten. 
They thankfully committed to presenting Rhodes as the American Nightmare and they reaped the rewards as Rhodes ushered in a prosperous era for the WWE that continues to grow. Rhodes analyzed the Stardust persona while speaking on grit and glory and Rhodes had a great take on why it fell apart. It hits a unique wall on the form of, of Stardust and because there were times where it was, it was a mask that I didn't want and then there were times it was a mask that I did want. You know, while I was doing Stardust, my dad passed away. It was 2015. Very true. Yep. Nothing I needed more at that time, actually, than to, to hide, to cover up. I wasn't ready to be Cody Rhodes. I wasn't ready to be anything. The last piece of it all, though, that I needed to find was, not to sound dramatic, but was the, was the American nightmare itself. Being the, the son of the American dream, and it just was time to take, take the mantle in my own way. I am part of... Uh, a royal family of wrestling and I'm lucky and humbled to be part of it but now I'm carrying it with me I'm not hiding it I'm not disguising it well there you have it folks 10 WWE wrestlers who survived a horrible gimmick be sure to leave your comments down below I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content